we are asked to simplify the following square roots. Looking at the radicands, or numbers under these square roots, notice how they are not perfect squares. This does not mean the square roots will not simplify, it just means they will not simplify perfectly. A square root will simplify if the radicand contains any perfect square factors. So in the previous lesson we learned that for a non-negative real number a, the square root of a squared is equal to a. For example, the square root of 25 is equal to the square root of five times five, which equals the square root of five squared, which simplifies to one factor of five. This simplified perfectly because 25 is a perfect square. But again, a square root will simplify as long as it contains perfect square factors. So if we look at the square root of 45, the prime factorization of 45 is three times three times five. Because we have two factors of three here, 45 does contain a perfect square factor, and therefore this will simplify. The square root of three times three times five equals the square root of three squared times five, and from here, we use the product rule for square roots, which states we can write the square root of a product as a product of two square roots. So this square root is equal to the square root of three squared times the square root of five, the square root of three squared simplifies perfectly to one factor of three, and therefore the square root of 45 simplifies to three square root five. Let's go back and look at our examples. The square root of eight will simplify if eight contains any perfect square factors. So let's look at the prime factorization of eight. The prime factorization of eight is two times two times two. Notice how we do have two equal factors here Two times two is four. Four is the perfect square factor of eight, and therefore this does simplify. This is equal to the square root of two squared times two, which we can write as the square root of two squared times the square root of two. The square root of two squared simplifies to one factor of two. The square root of eight simplifies to two square root two. Now let's simplify the square root of 48. The square root of 48 will simplify if 48 contains any perfect square factors. Now if we know our perfect squares and recognize that 48 is equal to 16 times three, we can save ourselves some work. We can write the square root of 48 equals the square root of 16 times three. 16 is a perfect square. This is equal to the square root of four squared times three, which equals the square root of four squared times the square root of three. And the square root of four squared simplifies to one factor of four. This simplifies to four square root three. But if we don't recognize that 16 is the perfect square factor of 48, we would look at the prime factorization of 48. So let's also do that. 48 is equal to six times eight. Six is equal to two times three. Eight is equal to two times four, and four is equal to two times two. The prime factorization of 48 is equal to four factors of two and a factor of three. Again, anytime we have two equal factors, we have a perfect square factor. So here's the perfect square factor, as well as here. So this is equal to the square root two squared times two squared times three. Now we'll write this as a product of three square roots. This equals the square root of two squared times the square root of two squared times the square root of three. The square root of two squared simplifies perfectly to one factor of two. So we have two times two times square root three, which equals four square root three. After we do this a while, we can probably go from this step here to the simplified square root, but for these examples, I will show this detailed work. Next we have the square root of 150. Let's look at the prime factorization of 150. 150 is equal to three times 50. 50 equals five times 10. 10 is equal to two times five. So the prime factorization of 150 is two times three times five times five. Five times five is a perfect square factor of 150, so this will simplify. 
let's change the order of this multiplication. Let's write five times five as five squared. So we have five squared times two times three, which is equal to the square root of five squared times the square root of two times three. The square root of five squared simplifies to one factor of five, and therefore this is equal to five times the square root of six. So square root 150 simplifies to five square root six. For our last example, we have the square root of 1,350. Let's look at the prime factorization of 1,350. This ends in zero, so it's equal to 10 times 135. 10 is equal to two times five. 135 is equal to five times 27. 27 equals nine times three, and nine equals three times three. So we have a factor of two, three factors of three, and two factors of five. Two times three times three times three times five times five. Three times three is a perfect square factor of 1,350, and so is five times five. Let's go ahead and write this as the square root of three squared times five squared times two times three, which is equal to the square root of three squared times the square root of five squared times the square root of two times three. Well, the square root of three squared is equal to three. The square root of five squared is equal to five. And this is still square root six. Three times five is equal to 15. And therefore this simplifies to 15 square root six. 15 square root six is a simplified form of the square root of 1,350. I hope you found this helpful.